Welcome along to this video, five instances where you couldn't serve a Section 21 notice and I'm joined by Landlord and Tenant Solicitor David Smith of Anthony Gold Solicitors. And David, I think landlords tend to automatically reach for the Section 21, but there are actually five instances that we're going to cover today where um, they couldn't actually serve one. So first of all, if we look at tenancy deposit protection. Yeah, it's probably sort of the, the oldie, the oldie but goodie is the original one now, is, is that where a tenancy deposit has not been properly protected uh, within 30 days after receipt and the prescribed information served within 30 days after receipt, uh, you will not be able to serve a Section 21 notice until you've returned the deposit um, or basically paid the tenant money. Indeed. Number two we're going to look at is any form of licensing and I think this is quite an interesting one that perhaps landlords don't have too much awareness of. Yeah and, and possibly a growth one as well so we've got that means that means mandatory HMO licensing so at the moment that's five or more occupiers three or more stories although I should point out the government's about to consult on uh, on uh, the definition of mandatory HMO licensing so that might be different. Mm -hmm. um, that's additional HMO licensing so where the local authority has specified its own HMO licensing scheme. So to use the example of Oxford, all HMOs. Um, and then selective licensing. So that's where the local authority has decreed that all landlords in the specified area must have a license. And I suppose one of the most recent examples might be Liverpool, mm -hmm. um, which now has uh, broad brush selective licensing. So if you haven't applied for a license, you don't have to have the license yet, mm -hmm. provided you've made a valid license application, you can serve a Section 21 notice, but until you do, you can't. Mm, very good information there. Uh, I think the next one we're going to look at is changes post uh, 1st of October, because obviously there's new regulation about Section 21 coming in. Yep, so the, the first area there would be the new, the new sort of prescribed information, as it were. Different prescribed information <laughs> now, though. The new so, yes. so, so you'll have to... Before, before you can serve a Section 21 on any tenancy that commences after the 1st of October or is renewed after the 1st of October, you will have to have given the tenant the new government how to rent guide, mm -hmm. uh, beautiful eight pages of colourful colourful loveliness. You will have to have given the tenant an EPC, probably you should have done so already really, and I'm sure you have done, and you will have to have given them a landlord's gas safety certificate, again I'm sure you've done so already. And you have to use the new form as well, don't you? You will have to use the new style form uh, if it's a tenancy that commences on or after the 1st of October. If your tenancy is before that, you don't have to use the new style form, but it doesn't matter that much if you do. And number four? So number four was, uh, again, tenancies after the 1st of October, is um, where the tenant has made a legitimate complaint of condition. So I don't mean disrepair, I mean a breach of condition under the Housing Health and Safety Rating System. Um, you will not be able to serve a Section 21 notice if they if that's a legitimate complaint. And if you do serve one, they can go to the local authority uh, to take that to take their complaint. If the local authority uphold the complaint and serve you with an improvement notice, your Section 21 will be invalidated. And the other side of that is if the local authority, for any reason, come into your property and serve you with an improvement notice, you will not be able to serve a Section 21 notice for the next six months. So it's potentially quite a long term. Uh, exclusion. Mm, indeed. And the fifth instance where a landlord wouldn't be able to serve a Section 21. And the, the final new one, again, yeah. post 1st October, um, is the first four months of the first assured shorthold tenancy. Mm -hmm. So on renewals and stuff, no problem, but the first four months of the initial tenancy. And I guess there is actually a bonus as well, um, that if there are rent arrears involved, you wouldn't necessarily go down the Section 21 route. Well, I think in the past, where there were rent arrears involved, quite a lot of landlords did go down the Section 21 route on the basis they wouldn't get money back anyway, and it saved them having to prove the point. Mm -hmm. um, I think now that people will have to reconsider that, and it may worth be worth using a Section 8 notice and mm -hmm. the sort of other route um, to possession if that's uh, if, if you've got rent arrears and can show it. Mm -hmm. and, and more often than not, landlords, in fact, do, because landlords don't, aren't, aren't just in the business of throwing out tenants usually just, just for fun. So. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for sharing those uh, instances where a landlord can't serve a Section 21 notice. And I think, you know, this is highlighting how important it is that landlords stay up to date with legislation. And I think perhaps um, when it comes to serving notice, I think perhaps landlords are going to more increasingly going to be seeking professional advice. Yeah, I mean, particularly at the moment, I, I can't emphasise enough how important it is to stay up to date right now because things are turning around so quickly and mm. there's so much going on. 
Um, yes, I know. Someone said to me the other day that uh, this is just a, a sort of solicitor's gift, and, <laughs> and uh, with my solicitor hat on, um, yeah, sorry, um, but uh, yes, it's a bit of a bit of a gold gold mine potentially for the legal profession, unfortunately. But that's uh, not not really what landlords require. But if landlords get it wrong, then it could mean that the S21 gets thrown out and they're right back to square one where they are. So, Yeah, I mean, taking a little bit of legal advice right at the start um, and then not necessarily instructing the solicitor to all the legal proceedings um, might be a sensible move to avoid wasting a great deal of time and effort mm -hmm. uh, going forward. Well, that's brilliant. Thanks very much for joining me in this video. hope you found it valuable.